ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this November 2018 Support and Save Thor News. For each month, at the beginning of each month, I raise money, contributions, and donations to keep my channel up and running. And it looks like this month, I'm going to need a money miracle, so if you want to keep me around, I would sincerely appreciate any contributions or donations if you can. If you're super broke like me, then prayers will do, and I will greatly appreciate those too. All right, now we are talking about the Parker Solar Probe, which I've nicknamed the Alex Parker Solar Probe, because it is getting close to Earth. It is breaking records, and the sun is kind of crazy and has been acting a bit wild and wacky, definitely since 2015. Technically, you could tra trace it back to 2012 when they announced the double peak minimal solar maximum. That was really weird. Right now, we have a giant coronal hole on the sun. And I will have to admit, after being obsessed with the sun baby for so long and having seen it with my own eyes without a camera several times, I haven't seen the sun baby in a while. I have seen other weird things around the sun. Which one day, if I ever get into my actual videos that I take with my own cameras and put them together, I'll show y'all. But, in a world that is arguing about politics 24-7, are people re really ready for that information? Anyway, so let's get to the blue pill, red pill, purple pill stuff. October 31st by Evan Go, and this is at Universe Today. Parker Solar Probe became the closest thing we've ever ever sent to the sun and it's just getting started because yeah they got the SDO cameras up and then they got the stereo cameras up and I've always said as your planetary defense commander it's best to have good cameras around the sun because a you're trying to find solar power figure out how to find solar power so we don't have to run everything off petroleum we pull out of the ground and since we pulled you know a, tr a, tr a trillion cubic feet of petroleum out of the ground I'm pretty sure that's probably heating earth as well and moving magma you know since you can't put water in your oil tank in your car can you know it'll overheat same deal with earth and you have coronal mass ejections, which can wipe out the power grid as we know it. And they're like, well, you know, the sun can't change the weather that much. Well, buddy, it can set your house's roof on fire. So I think you can change the weather instantly. And technically, if the sun shut off, that would definitely change the weather. But I was proud of NASA, because remember, NASA's a lot like Hogwarts. You have, you have your good divisions, your bad divisions. It depends on who's in charge. Is it the military and oil industrial complex? Or is it Voldemort? Or is it government? Or is it us? Or is it friendly aliens? Who knows? But either way, each division is different, and I love the sun division, the solar division, and the people in it at NASA. You can put that in your pipe and suck it, buddy. NASA's Parker Solar Probe is now the closest object to the sun that we've ever sent into space. Congratulations. On October 29th, 2018, at about 1.04 p.m., NASA's probe broke the old record for close to sun distance at 42.73 million kilometers. That record was held by German-American Helios II spacecraft in 1976. The probe will keep getting closer to the sun. We hope. You never know what's going to happen, man. 2018 is a wild year, and God laughs at the plans of mice and men. I don't think mice really make plans. The Parker Solar Probe, which launched on August 12th, 2018, on a projected six-plus-year mission. The mission is designed to answer 60-year-old questions regarding our sun. Because a lot of times they like to say the climate debate is settled. But it's not, because the Earth's atmosphere is a dynamic process. What is going on with the Earth and the sun? We don't fully understand. You know what I'm saying? And I think it took them a year and a half to design and launch this mission. Where if you look at the James Webb Space Telescope, 
it's taken them 22 years to design it, build it, and they still haven't launched it. So, once again, I'm proud of this the solar team at Parker Solar Probe. How do energy and heat move through the corona? Uh, I have no idea, but when I tilt my bottle back, the beer flows through. And the heat moves through if I leave it outside of the cooler too much. That was a bad beer joke. Let's keep moving. How do the solar structure and dynamics of the magnetic fields accelerate the solar winds? I would like to know that. What mechanisms accelerate and transport energetic particles? Hey, I'd like to know that too. What other stellar bodies are affecting our sun from our star field? I'd like to know that as well. In order to answer these questions, the probe has to get closer to the sun than any object before it. It will move directly through the sun's outer corona and come as close as 6.9 million kilometers. And there's already a lot of math in this article. Math hurts my brain. It's been just 78 days since Parker Solar Probe launched, and we've now come closer to our star than any other spacecraft craft in history. <clears throat> Good job, Project Angie Driesman from the John Hopkins Applied Physicals Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland. It's a proud moment for the team, though we remain focused on our first solar encounter, which begins on October 31st. Jonathan McDowell of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics recognized that the moment was tweetworthy. Well, that ain't saying much. I know people who think their bowel movements are tweet-worthy. Although, this accomplishment is much bigger than a bowel movement. Jonathan McDowell, Planet 4589. By my calculations, at 1635 UTC today, October 29th, Parker Sun Pro became the closest, closer to the sun than any other artificial object has ever been. 0.29 astronomical units with no wax on its wings. Good job, Icarus. Tired of Icarus, great. Phelan, you know what I'm saying? You got your convective zone. That's where they keep all the candy. They got the corona. That's where they get the beer from. The, radi the radiative zone. Here comes the heat and the light. The sun's core, which is like the sun's heart, really. You got your coronal streamers, which is kind of like the sun sending kisses. And then your chromosphere, which is the sciencey stuff. Okay, I made all that up in an attempt to be humorous, and it probably failed. This is a perilous journey. Aren't they all these days, though? For the spacecraft, it will be exposed to the blistering heat of the sun at that distance. A spacecraft melting temperature of 1,377 degrees. Oh, that's almost leet. Degrees Celsius to withstand that intense energy. Man, if we can make a spacecraft that can withstand getting that close to the sun, you would think we could create big buildings on the edge of the coast that could withstand 100 to 200 mile per hour winds without even shaking a little. It's called improvement, advancement, and technology. And one day, hopefully we'll start taking step forward again. The spacecraft won't spend all of its time in that intense heat. The probe will conduct 24 close approaches to the sun during its mission. <clears throat> if you divide that by three, that's eight, but that makes no sense. And is neither here nor there with this article. The Parker Solar Probe is also the fastest. That's what she said. The probe is not only the closest object to the sun that we've ever sent into space, it's also really fast. 246.961 kilometers per hour relative to the sun. Wait, isn't the sun going 300,000 miles an hour? So how fast does it have to go to catch up to the sun? I'm so confused. Sometimes celestial mechanics hurts my brain. It's like math, but different. All right, flat earthers, now's your time to start saying that proves it. It's flat. And I can neither confirm nor deny whether the earth is round or flat. I'm guessing it's Earth, though, because the moon is round and Jupiter's round and 
you know, there's a lot of strength in the circle. To me, the circle is the strongest symbol in the universe. Although people are like, no, it's the triangle. The triangle can kick everybody's ass. But man, I think the triangle is a lot like Mars and has been getting way too much credit. There are other symbols in the universe. Of course, the conditions so close to the sun are so intense that the Parker won't hang out there for long. The radiation environment that close to a star is deadly and the Parker has to limit its exposure to protect itself and its instruments. It will conduct 24 looping elliptical orbits, including seven flybys of Venus, to decelerate. And that's almost what civilization has been doing. After doing a lot of awesome technological advancements, it's been decelerating in retrograde. Let's hope we can go forward and start to accelerate again. In each of these 24 orbits, it will approach the sun closely, conduct its science, and then loop away safely. Then come home and drink a beer. Well, I made that up. There will be communication blackouts while it's close to the sun. And behind the sun is seen from Earth. Its first close encounter with the sun will be on November 6th, when it reaches perihelion for the first time. We won't know the science results from that encounter until December. The Parker Solar Probe is part of NASA's Living with a Star program. The aim of that program is to study the Earth and Sun relationship and how it affects life on Earth. The Sun is the only star we have access to, Asterisk. So, studying how it interacts with Earth should tell us something about how life evolved here and how life might evolve around other stars. Are we still evolving? It feels like we're stuck in the mud, doggy paddling, in civilization lava, whatever that is. But, yep, the sun, it's crazy, man. Everything is crazy. Because when the sun acts weird, the weather acts weird, and then people act weird. So definitely, the sun has been acting weird for a while. I want to thank you for being here with me on this Thor News adventure. And if somehow I don't make it, and Thor News doesn't survive, I want you to know that I've had a great time and I love you guys. But if you do want to keep me around, I'll leave my PayPal link in the box. And we got 48 hours or Monday at 8 a.m. to save me. And I'm worth it because I'm awesome. And I'm bad at math. So that 48-hour projection is probably wrong. I love you. Stay cool. God bless everyone. Let us live long and prosper together. And may the force be with you always.